two pumps, two boats, and two ways of savoring life. Through the hard work of restoring our Heavenly Twins catamaran, and through the adventures we take and places we visit on our McGregor 26X. Our channel takes an easygoing, light-hearted approach to enjoying life, one bikini at a time. So if you're up for some sailing and other fun, then we're happy to have you aboard. We post new videos every couple weeks, so hit that subscribe button and we'll see you here next time. And also, check out the links below. We have extended videos on Vimeo, and we also have a Patreon page. Thanks to everyone for watching. This, this looks like it matches so well. This segment brought to you by Coppertone. The captain says to me, I bought a surprise, a surprise for you. Well, he's been the one that's been saying he wants a paddleboard for the last two years. I want a kayak, but now we have a paddleboard and you know, I'm always up for trying something new anyway. So, so tell us about it. It is a board by Streaker, 10 foot six. Any other specs on this? Most inflatables don't have a deep center fin. This has three fins and a detachable center fan for stability so it's ex it's a little more stable the re review said it was more stable than the typical blow up how much did you pay for it uh, 200 and something 210 or 290 uh, around 260 it was on sale it's like a i think it was 100 off it sounds like a lot but regular paddle boards are like two grand or are they less expensive than that they're anywhere from a few hundred to, you can buy for a few thousand. Oh, a few hundred, are they? Well, this one is. Well, I mean the hard, the rigid ones. Oh, the rigid ones? Yeah, they they usually start 600, I think. This is a good option if you, you know, want to be able to take it down if your boat's smaller. If you want to be a little quicker about it, you can use one of the little rechargeable hand pumps. We like to do that before we start filling it with a manual pump. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh gosh, awesome. Look how fast that was. That was what? That wasn't even 30 seconds, do you think? Yeah, I'd say so. Get a little more and then I'll use the hand pump. So it, it uh, comes with the um, this hand pump here. So for tweaking, getting the extra, you're out. <laughs> Son of a... <laughs> I'll hold it. I think that you said... <gasps> oh my you god. You okay? <laughs> that scared me. Um, Air is scary. Okay, so... Getting the little extra bit of air in with the hand pump that comes with it. You can read, you can read the gauge on there. Letting you know. Yellow. More air. Green, Green range just right. good. Red, bad. If you ever want to deflate it, you just let go of everything. It wants to deflate itself just sitting here. Right. He chose this color, which he could not have done better. It's, it's absolutely perfect for this water. We got a namer. Sailing and streaking. Streaking and fun. Streaking and fun. In the bottom that's pretty <laughs> that's what we meant to do we just wanted to show you guys the fin and there's the streak it's inflatable but it's you know it's, it's still got some a little bit of weight to it got a little nice carrying uh, bungee at the front there grip for your feet 
The captain was right. This paddleboard is pretty nice. Very little paddling required. I have a motor on my paddleboard. Pretty comfortable, huh? See you in Mexico. That's why you don't have to step in the grass. Nope, nope. You're gonna tip over the bag. Keep your knees bent. Crouch down a little bit. And keep a, try to keep a wide stance. And don't tell the instructor, shh. You're not an instructor. I've read about how to do it. Whoa. Wide stand. So nope. do I. Uh, but I have to adjust, adjust my feet for me, baby. Geez, you're standing up right away. I'm thinking maybe I should have cut her nails for this. Or put a towel down. Yeah. <laughs> we are zipping all around the boat. Can't keep track of you. I think she might want to go swimming though. Yeah. We can't stress enough how important it is to stow your paddles. They can float away from you very easily, and you might not even know they're gone until you're ready to get back on the board and paddle again. Side waves. Should I take you off the leash? Oh, okay. You don't have to be 10 feet from the boat at all times. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work out. Oh, Cut out your fenders if you're going to do that. Wow, this is an unusual way to see, see the boat. See the boat. And there she goes. A non-inflatable paddleboard is more stable, but if you have decent balance, it's pretty easy to get used to it. Just don't become overconfident. <laughs> don't lose those new glasses. I hit that so hard it stung my bottom. What'd you hit? My ass. On the water? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you did a butt flop? Yeah, a booty flop. <laughs> I thought those glasses were toast. Well, one thing that helps is that they're, they're freaking, won't come out of my hair. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I think it helps if you bend the frame. It's like, like uh, what are those called, croakers? Yeah. Here's where you can see the color choice of the paddle board really shines. I like equipment that blends with the surroundings rather than contrasting and kind of standing out. So you can see how pretty it is against this beautiful bluish green water of the reef. It's also nice that you can be down so close to the water without actually being in, which is what I was doing, hanging out with the sergeant majors, looking down, just not focusing enough on the bigger fish. Pretty sizable shark that was swimming just beneath my feet, I didn't see until I looked at this footage. And at 10 feet 6 inches, the paddleboard is big enough for two. Everybody's pretty tired after a fun day of paddle boarding. Now, I usually like to leave the paddle board inflated. The captain likes to deflate it and roll it up. If you're in his camp, at least it's pretty simple to do. Three, two, one. A 
All right, we had some fun in the sun. Now it's time to get some work done. That piece that I did the other day, templated for, and the captain and I cut, that's what's under here now, under where the motor cover is, because some of the wood, or all of the wood actually, is deteriorating right there. And we're gonna put another piece up here, so I was templating for it, and then I realized if you squeeze the wood there, I don't know if you squeeze it like, squeeze it like, yeah. Well, you probably can't see, but I mean, you can actually squeeze it out. So what we're gonna do is remove the piece of wood and we're also gonna do it on this side because although, will you touch the wood, baby? Although this wood is not um, wet, I chipped that out with my finger. So we're gonna cut across a couple places and we're going to replace that as well. These are the things we come across and, and then they're, you know, they're not small things. So we have to address them before we can move on to the stuff that we were intending to work on. We're doing it. We're trying to keep it together um, through each little surprise that the boat is gifting us with. Right, Captain? Right, Captain? Yep. You look cute. It's an accident. <laughs> Look at that, damn. See, you can see where I stopped. So use the that thingy and go this way. I don't know if y'all can see that. This is how saturated it is. Can you see the water coming out? I think, I think maybe you can. Okay, I just got this other side out. You know, it's loose, but it's not uh, saturated like the other one saws all that. And then here, I'm trying to get the rest of this out. I don't want to lose any more of this tabbing. This is pretty thick. Because we're trying to work within the confines of the boat and not break up any more than we have to, I get kind of creative to get down in there and remove some of the rotted wood. Here, I've just discovered another three foot long problem. Y'all saw when we uh, cut into it and the wood was wet, got all that out we're excited about it but then we have found hopefully you can see um, we have a problem here this is where we think the source of the water was coming from in the first place we have our joist back here or whatever you would call it and that is deteriorating we hope it's only in this section the other wood was wicking it up so we're just going to take off our fabulous doors and our entire door frame because that's where we think that the leak is coming from we can't find anywhere else so we think it must be behind something that we actually can't see this is the door threshold the main cabin we took it all apart we still we, there's nothing coming here we can't find it anywhere and we had we put a lip on here just to stop water from actually coming into the boat this way and we caulked it but we just realized, just saw by taking this all apart that there was a hole in the fiberglass that was being covered. And now we're trying to take it off because we believe that it is coming in here. I mean, you can see how the wood is dark and then it's actually coming out Weeping over here. Because we think it's and this is where the support beam was that was absorbing all the water and the one that I could squeeze out. The reason we couldn't tell is because there's layer of fiberglass, then we've got the floorboard support, and then there's fiberglass under here. Um, so we can't tell where the leak is coming from from underneath. So this this whole area, you know, that we're working on that y'all have seen is the area that's been rotting, and there was no way to find out where the water was coming from. Wood wicks water, so if, if one piece of wood gets wet, it actually wicks into another where we're gonna take off this fiberglass front. None of these things we've been showing you guys lately are anything that we anticipated having to do. We keep coming up with new problems, new areas that we have to track down where the problem is coming from, figure out the best way to rectify it, and then of course, implement the plans. So we really appreciate you hanging in there with us. Keep your fingers crossed that we keep soldiering on and we can't thank you enough for your support.